Hey, it's meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen coming at you with some weather forecast information. The snow and the rain slowly starting to, to diminish across the area from that storm system overnight and the winds are just taking a little bit longer to diminish although not too bad here in the Denver metro area let's take a look at the HD Doppler radar right now and you can see those the rain showers have finally moved off of the eastern plains at least the bulk of them and the snow showers in the high country are really starting to come to a close as well but you can still see some reflections coming from those snowflakes up there in the high country probably not going to get any more snow accumulation out of this although there are still some at least some flurries in the area over here on the eastern plains that big shield of heavy rain has finally moved across the state line into kansas and there's just a few scattered showers remaining but the precipitation will really start to wind down over the next couple of hours and be pretty much clear by the six o'clock hour in the, across the entire state of Colorado. Winds dying down just a little bit slower, especially in these areas that are covered in the pink shaded areas. So much of the eastern plains and still Weld County and parts of Larimer County up to our north are still included in this high wind warning, which is scheduled to go until 6 p.m., which is the time we expect the bulk of these wind gusts to simmer down below that kind of the 30 mile an hour fresh threshold, which is still what we can see here in the Denver metro area. As you see from the wind gust forecast here going through the uh, rest of the night, I'll back that up just a little bit to about the four o'clock hour. You can still see, now the, this forecast model shows you only the peak wind gusts that are possible. So there's still, you can still get a 15 to 20 mile per hour gust in the Denver metro area and even some 30 mile an hour gusts in the area. But what it doesn't show you is how uh, infrequent these gusts are, which we're only getting uh, one of these peak wind gusts only about once or twice every hour now. So that kind of an indication that's starting to simmer down and you see the computer forecast model going into the 11 o'clock hour and we transition just into breezy conditions, which we're kind of feeling here mostly in the Denver metro area. And that will kind of characterize the day on Wednesday as well. The winds are not going to be completely gone, but they're not going to be ferocious either. I'd say a breezy day across much of the Front Range on Wednesday. Here's a look at the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnel up there in I-70. Traffic going westbound is stopped currently. There have been some minor issues up in the high country, but you can see the lanes there of I-70 are just wet. So at least the traveling conditions on the road surface are not too bad, at least on the east side of the tunnels. You can also see some snow flurries still going up there. That's kind of, that's what we're seeing, those reflections that we're seeing on the radar. That is what the, the result is that, that the actual snow is kind of flurryish, not not a huge impact, and that's what we'll see over the next few hours in the high country. But look at these snow reports, pretty respectable snow reports coming in from this very quick hitting overnight storm system here in the middle of April. Copper Mountain, 18 inches reported at their snow stake up uh, on the top of their resort this morning, so that's pretty good. That's pretty decent. That was right in the top end of the forecast range. And uh, Copper Mountain has extended their season. They actually announced that yesterday in anticipation of some, some more snow coming. And they're gonna go all the way uh, into the first week of May here. And here's some other uh, ski resorts posting some marks up here that are still open. Loveland Ski Area coming in with 10 inches. Vail Resort with 12. Winter Park with 10. So the ski areas that are still open, got some real nice fresh powder up there. Some of the towns got some decent totals as well. Uh, we got a report of eight near, very close to Silverthorne, Alma with 8.4 inches. So some pretty decent snow out there. Here's the computer forecast model going forward up to about 530. You can see that the state is pretty much clear of precipitation at this point, except for maybe down uh, right along the southern um, state line 
in near New Mexico and, and Oklahoma, but for the most part, this precipitation uh, event will be over at that point. Going into tonight, I think we'll get mostly clearing. I think we'll probably wake up to some cloud cover along the front range, maybe a, a mountain wave cloud early in the morning, but I think we're gonna get our fair deal of sunshine through the day on Wednesday as well, and we'll get those temperatures up into the 70s again. Keep in mind this will these 70s will be accompanied with a little bit of a breeze so that could take some of the the warm edge off of it but I think it's going to be a pretty comfortable day across the front range on Wednesday. Same thing with the high country if you want to take a, a day off and head up there and enjoy what's some of that powder that's still left over. Now you're probably wondering about what you're seeing on your smartphone apps about Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there are a few more cold fronts coming our way that we'll have to watch for. And when you look at this jet stream forecast, you see the big storm system marked with the blue and green colors well to the north of Colorado. That Chose, sh tells you one thing is that it's not going to be a direct hit from the from a storm system. We're going to get kind of the peripheral uh, impacts of that storm system, and then a, a very small uh, secondary s storm system. So what I'll show you, this is Thursday, and I think this will push a cold front down into the front range and it's going to be very noticeable because it's going to be very cold air and it's going to keep our temperatures down very chilly on Thursday but it's also a what we call a dry front there's not a lot of moisture available in it so I would not expect there to be very widespread precipitation on the front range from this maybe covering 10 20 percent of the area as we go through Thursday as I put it into motion here, there's just a little bit more of a substantial bend to this. If you look at the yellow colors there over the state of Colorado bending downward, it's a little bit more significant and I think there will be more moisture involved in this. So that will start to impact the area on Friday night going into Saturday morning. So if you take a look at what that all that information means laid out on the seven day forecast, kind of what you're familiar with looking at your smartphone apps. You can see that Thursday, even though there's not a high chance of precipitation, gotta leave that little raindrop icon in there because there's just enough of a chance to give you, give a, a little bit of a rain chance on Thursday but very, very low impact there. Most of us won't see any moisture out of that. And then when we go into Friday, I think that will start to become noticeable on Friday night with mostly rain, but the temperatures will be cold enough to get a rain-snow mix going on Friday night. And as the temperatures continue to drop into Saturday morning, I think that is where we could even see a full transition into snow. It most likely will remain kind of a rain-snow mix for the city and then the higher suburbs in the south and the southwest part of the, the metro area could get a full transition into some snowflakes if there's enough moisture left over. And most of the modeling is kind of suggesting that that will be the case. So if you have some outdoor plans on Saturday morning, I would expect that to be very uncomfortable for you if you've got some youth sports events out there or you're planning anything outside. Looking at a pretty uncomfortable morning on Saturday, even if it just ends up being a little flurryish and or drizzly, I think the temperatures and the wind gusts there on Saturday morning will be uncomfortable enough to kind of hinge what you kind of do with your with your plans on that day that will start to gradually transition into some better weather towards the end of Saturday, but I really don't think that we're gonna break 50 degrees on Saturday. And then Sunday is when we'll really start to see that rebound with a little bit more of sunshine, get those temperatures up there close to 70. And then we're probably looking at two nice 70 degree days on Monday and Tuesday before we get into a little bit of a pattern where we could see some afternoon thunderstorms develop for the rest of that next week. But so hopefully that gives you uh, an idea of what to do with those 
raindrops you're seeing on that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday situation. So thanks for joining us with the forecast information and have a great day.